My name is Tim Wiskachan, as it says. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about my journey, my path as an artist. Hold on. It's more gadgets. So, uh, yes, I've been an artist for quite some time, and um, I, I did a slideshow just to show you some various works. How many of you uh, speak Cree? Understand Cree? Okay. I would have to give you a So ni. Um, so I'll just proceed. I don't know if you can see it well, but I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna talk about my my life. Um, I was born in Chibogmo. Yes, 1968. So I'm 48. I'm becoming an elder now slowly. I was adopted. I, I was adopted when I was a child and. Uh, at uh, a tender age of 11 months. I'm originally from Miss Disney, um, but uh, I was raised in Chape. I was very fortunate to be adopted. It was very crucial uh, at that age, because uh, I didn't have a home. I, I guess my mom couldn't take care of me. So, uh, so uh, Harry and Laura adopted me. The Whiskey Chan family, they both came from West Gagnish. I was hospitalized. I was a very sick baby. Unfortunately, um, I'm alive. I'm talking here today to you. <laughs> and well, you go wash. <laughs> and uh, I was raised in uh, Chape most of my part of my life, about 13 years. So <clears throat> I was very shy, very shy boy when I was growing up. I, I was very um, not, not very talkative. But I remember when I, going to, I went to school in, uh, in Chape, I had a uh, problem listening to my teacher. <laughs> I guess I was daydreaming a lot. I guess that's when I started uh, thinking about art. But I'm not telling you guys to daydream and not to do the work in school. <laughs> it's not what I'm trying to say. But I guess I was uh, interested in art when I was a very young kid. This is me. This is how I look like. Uh, this was, I guess this picture was taken when I was five years old. Uh, yeah, uh, my mother and my father and my mother, my adoptive parents were the ones who, who exposed me at a young age. My father, I, I don't know if you know all, some paintings, I did a portrait of my father. He, uh, he was an artist himself. And we weren't very rich while growing up. Uh, my dad was making the means of making. So art was one way to support us. So he was very good at making decoys. Well, at that time, he was just starting in, when we were living in Chape. And he also made snowshoes. The reason why I explain this, the history, it's important for young people to know where they come from, how, how well they were taught by their parents. And my parents taught me very young to appreciate uh, my culture. Like me, my dad made snowshoes, he made decoys. The other thing great about my dad and my mom, they always went in the bush even though they were not from Chape. We were lucky to, to have friends like the Dixon family, the trap line in Chape. And uh, this also greatly influenced me. We used to go a lot of outdoors. And some of the questions they ask me when I do art, say, how come your paintings are so alive? How come your paintings are so illuminant. Well, when I was a young boy, my dad always took me out in the bush. He always took me out of the land. And even though we didn't have our own trap line, but we went out in the bush and he showed me to wake up early. Like I would get up at five in the morning and half asleep and I would, I would go check uh, nets or hooks or go blueberry picking in the summer. So at the young age, I was influenced to to enjoy nature. So that's why my paintings look so alive and when I was a young, I was already influenced by that. <coughs> it's also, like I mentioned, waking up early in the morning. Uh, my dad uh, always did art while he was uh, living, uh, especially the tamarack decoys. He did it for all of his life for 45 years. 
and uh, his decoys were were one of my uh, inspiration for my art. And in college, I don't know if you can see it well, but I did an assignment in college about him and the portrait. Fortunately, the resolution, it's too bright. Can't even go in detail with it, but then this was one of my college assignments, my final mark in co one of my college assignments, third year. I did the Cree, Cree name, Harry Wishkachan, and this is actual uh, patterns that I came from West Gagnish in 1908. So I did research. And all these patterns, I don't think you'll see well, but there's some photos of it. It's actually traditional uh, uh, designs that actually came in West, from West Gagnish. So I, I had 100%, so thank God. <laughs> that painting I just showed you was in college. And the other thing I would like to emphasize too is I was bullied too. And art was the way for me to, to get away or to, to feel good about myself. But I still managed my integrity in the sense of doing art. Art was very therapeutic for me. It helped me grow up. Uh, to deal with hardships uh, and feel positive about myself. And a little bit about fast tracking. During high school, I'd, teachers began to realize that I had potential. Teachers were starting to say, hey, Tim, you know how to draw, you, you know how to blend your colors. And they told me, this is where you should go try, try it out, try uh, do art more. And I guess the reason why I'm bringing this up is young people out there as artists, starting artists, it's always getting discovered. And for my case, I got discovered in high school while I was going to school in, uh, in Wiskagnish. And slowly, I, I, I started to draw a lot. I started to sell my work a bit. This is where I, my artistic started, really. This is one of my first drawings in 1989. I, I uh, thanks to Facebook, <laughs> this friend of mine, I, I contact him, his name is Gérard. He was a teacher back in 1988, in 89. I, with this drawing, this one is special, because I used to do a lot of line work like you see some of the artists do. This is one of the, 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 the drawings that made a mark for me in a sense. Uh, this is the style I started doing. And I, I, I gave this painting to him, like this drawing, and in return, I, he made me borrow his pens, his technical pens. And the more I made them and the more I sold, and the more material I started to purchase. So this is where my business, I guess, my art career started, and I started selling my work in the early 80s. <coughs> and the high school days is when I, like I mentioned, it was a changing point of my life. In secondary four, there was a Christmas card logo uh, Christmas card contest. It was open to all Cree school board of the Crees. And I was selected as the winner. And that was one of the highlights of my life. It was uplifting. Like for young artists, uh, I like to encourage them to, uh, whatever, if there's contest open in your schools or anywhere, give it a shot. You never know where it will end up. Um, <coughs> I have a slight cold. Uh, you get that in. I'm coughing sometimes, but um, <clears throat> that that made me pursue. You know those little things in life as a young artist. If it gives you a boost, so this is one of my boosts that I had, and I started to get recognized a bit. Because due of lack of funding, I bought uh, supplies from the school, or the teachers would give me some uh, some material in exchange for art. So this was one one way. Ultimately, I was able to purchase my own material and had more money through my artwork. So I started to, to buy material. So young artists, again, if you, if you decide to sell your work, try to invest some of your money to buy some material or whatever you want to do. Then as more work was requested and more supplies that were purchased, I need, then I needed space to work. My first studio was... Uh, my mom's basement. Thank you. you know, young artists, they have to find space. So my, the funny part of this one is, you know how parents, they give rooms to their children? To one room or a room upstairs? 
Well, for me, my parents gave me the whole basement. So that was my whole room. So uh, I was grateful for that. <laughs> I had space to draw or paint. This was one of my, I don't think you see the, the picture well, but this is one of my first studios back home in Wiskagnish. After high school in 20s, I, my range of art started to be more recognized. And uh, that's when I decided to go to Val d'Or to work there. Most of my drawings, my art, were purchased from Wajia store, arts store there, which was in Val d'Or. I don't know if you know it, but it's not there anymore, but it used to be a place where I'd sell. And this is one of the first places that they helped me for grant money, where I got my table, my lamp, and my chair. So this Val d'Or Wajia store helped me to get a grant money. So even though today, you, young artists today, you can get grant money by showing your artwork, sending it to, uh, to this place. Well, I had some artwork, and then I told him I needed some money to purchase. So a lot of artists, there's opportunities for you now. <coughs> this is a drawing I did for ink drawing. This is a series of paintings I drew while I was in the Aldor. This one, uh, when I went to, uh, in Ottawa, I stumbled across with this old painting. And I said, oh, wow, I think this is too long. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was starting to critic my work. But those are the first artwork I did. Uh, these, paint, these drawings were, were hanging in the embassy of uh, Grand Council offices, all the Cree Nation offices. This one was done in the 90s. So I said, when, I, when I see my old paintings, I say, oh, it feels like I'm seeing an old friend, like Weshke de Justano. Also, that time I was privileged to be published in a in a magazine while I was twenty in my twenties, and the raconte. I don't know if you remember. There was a magazine that circulated all over the province of Quebec, so this opportunity was open to publish one of my paintings, and it was circulated all over. And because of that mag, the artwork was on my magazine. I started to have calls from Europe, so I said, "Wow, that's pretty cool." And through this exposure, I received uh, calls from Europe. So any artist here, if you're asked to do, uh, to do a cover of the Rolling Stones, maybe, <laughs> or a cover of a magazine, take that chance. You never know. This is where you can get known. So this was like free publicity for me back then. There's the magazine that I did on the cover of Raconte. It was same, simple, but yet, this meaning uh, of an elder, a native with the, with the goose. I guess uh, this represented our culture. We were so into our, our goose break. I call it nomad that time. And what's so special about this is this one was signed by a famous artist too. I met him in Quebec City back in 92. His name was Norman Knott. So he got to sign this too, which is an honor. Believe it or not, I'm the one who made the logo of CNYC. I'm the, the person who made this. So here I'm standing there talking to you. <laughs> That's me when, in a couple of years. <laughs> and my grandchildren. <laughs> That's me. And I did logos, a lot of banners. You know, to survive in the art world, it's good to do all kind of stuff. Because later, uh, you might be tired of doing a painting over and over. Maybe change it for a while, mix it up. So I mixed it up. I did logos, banners, paintings, even painted on furniture, even did a lot of illustrations. You probably see a lot of my samples there at that table. That was me when I was young and handsome and more hair. <coughs> I did, like, like I said, this, this is a sample of a wedding gift. Like sometimes people will commission me to do wedding gifts up on boxes or, or, or toy boxes. And to this day, that person still has it. And there's two or three of them that are still in the, but I, that was one way of, of changing my art. This one is a, a dark shot, but then it's the painting that's hanging at the CRA a Grand Council office in Ottawa. A lot of my artwork, I use to reference my own photos. This is a portrait of my dad, my sensei. <laughs> Uh, his name is Harry Wishkechan. He's the Tamarack decoy maker. This one was published in a, uh, as a Christmas card. This is my own design, like a night shot, and then the James Bay map with the northern lights. It was used for the Grand Council of Decrees to, to, 
I think this was even sent to the, in Europe too, I was told. I also do a lot of commission work for schools, government buildings, and name it. Uh, even to this day, uh, I'm doing a lot of contracts. This is one of my first paintings on steel, stainless steel. I used to paint a lot on canvas, but when you're good at it, you can paint any surface. There's ways of doing it. There's a different technique. That's in Annie Wiskachan School in uh, Wiskagnish. A lot of my drawings, like I like to encourage a lot of the artists there, young artists, you, your, your art is so awesome, it's so uh, creative. Those drawings can also be reproduced. This one, a, a drawing I did was, was uh, a stained glass, con stained glass concept, and later it was enlarged to uh, a 40-foot mural out of glass. I didn't do the, the glass work, but it was sent in Montreal. So artists like that, like when you do all those kind of work, they can be enlarged in different mediums. And this is another stained glass I designed, which is at the Ants Jugmuk. As you go in, uh, some of the collections, I think it's where it's the coffee room or the, I think it's right when you go into the uh, the arts and craft boutique, I think there's a glass section there that you see. And what's so cool about it, on a certain day of the day, the sun hits the mural and does a, an artwork on the actual floor. It's just cool. <laughs> These are a lot of my college assignments. I kept those because when I do workshops in class or schools, and this one was a bunch of uh, teddy bears, and it's in pastel. In college, if you do art, they make you do anything. Like They make you draw whatever you can. So it was texture, a pastel. This one, believe it or not, I, it was a painting that I had to listen to Mozart. It's a uh, classical music. Teacher made us paint while listening to music. It's a good thing I didn't listen to a, a rough one. My paintings would probably go like this. I would probably go like that. Like, uh, you know, those people that make the, uh, what they call those, uh, da 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 da, you know, da 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 da, you know, da da, you know, the painting would have been, would have been more wild, I guess, the painting. <laughs> A lot of my drawings, uh, skills, I developed in college too. You know, when I, before I went to college, I used to draw like this, really small. But the teacher says, Tim, draw the whole page. So you young artists, maybe, draw the whole page. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. This is me in 2000, uh, 2060. <laughs> this is a cyborg. I don't know if you can see it well, but there's a photo over there. A lot of my preliminary work before I do my, I do a studies. This is a self-portrait of my face. The teacher told us, do something weird. Well, I didn't do anything weird, but I said, I'll try. So I made a robot of myself. So art is uh, such a, a cool way to do whatever you want with it. Your imagination could be beyond. This one is a painting that I did, and it's a mural concept. What I mean is the, uh, I did a artwork, and then there's different forms. This is in Nemeska School. For Nemeska School, a lot of these competitions are 1%. What it means is uh, maybe a lot of your artists eventually will do that when you get better, or some artists will be asked to do a, a concept, and if they'll take it. This one was turned into a ceramic piece, which is now hanging at Nemeska School. What's so cool about this one is my family my daughter came with me in Montreal, in Montreal, <laughs> and we actually participated in doing the ceramics. I don't know if you know ceramic pottery. Well, I got the chance to see the three masters working on my mural. And at the same time, I got the chance to work with these masters, and I had to paint with them. It's such a different way of painting on a ceramic tile using sponge, and it's all about chemistry. You have to calculate how much percentage of paint to come up once it goes in the kiln, the kiln is like a big stove. And believe it or not, they, they made about, I don't know, maybe close to 5,000 tiles. And times, well, maybe I'd say 2,000, maybe close, and multiply that by three, because they have to match all the colors. It took about a year to make this one. It was a long, tedious job, but I was honored. And it's a, a painting that's hanging now in the, well, the Nemeska School. So you young artists, you know, 
if you do a painting, if they ask you, you get those privileges. The government pays you to live in a condo and enjoy a little bit of life for two weeks, and then, then they send you back home after. <laughs> live the dream. That's the mural. It's all ceramic tiles. It's hanging in Emeska School. <clears throat> this is me signing the work. If you really want to see the painting, it's hanging at the clinic right now in the conference room. It's about 100 feet mural. This one was very challenging because it's narrow, and these people told me you have to do a concept of everything about your culture. Boy, that made me sweat. I think that's when I started losing hair. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm getting old and wiser, I guess. This is a, it's a poor shot, but then this is a picture of the, uh, the artwork. Maybe we should turn around the screen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a women's clinic. This one is in uh, CRA, Grand Council Office. I sold those a uh, few. I think this one is hanging in uh, Ujibugmu, uh, multi purpose, uh, multi service center. This one is special. I want to take off my coat. Testing one two. This is me. This is the mayor or director. This is my mother-in-law, my niece. That's an art concept. <coughs> Quick job. It's a pastel rendering, and later on it was turned into a mural. This is the mural. It was all in on steel, stainless. It's hanging in Chape. This is where I I I grew up. It was an honor because. Why I'm saying this is because when they asked me to enter in this contest, and then when I won, and I got to meet the mayor, the mayor asked me, uh, I told him where I was from. He said, you picked the right person. I said, why? I lived in Chape for 13 years. I'm a citizen of Chape. No. <laughs> so they so they actually, uh, I lived in Chape. It was an honor to do something for the town of Chape. That's at the sports complex. I did a lot of portraits. Uh, I don't mind doing portraits, but they're very challenging. The photo has to be good. Like the gentleman over there, I understand what he, he goes through. He's very uh, skillful and very impressed of his work. A lot of my work also is uh, black and white. And then I reproduce it into color. It's like a study. This is uh, the actual painting over there what's, that's hanging. This is one of my biggest projects as up to date. Very challenging. It was like 30 feet high by 20 feet wide. And I had to build a, an easel about 16 feet high. So three sections of 16 feet. I had to paint. Uh, it was some challenging, one of my challenging projects. It took me about uh, two months maybe. I used to get up five in the morning, work at nine o'clock in the morning to the band office, have supper. Um, Spend time with my family, then go back to the art around nine. Once my daughter goes to bed, then I start my work again. <laughs> so in reality, you have to find balance too with family and life and art and work. So this is me, uh, my wife and my daughter, or you can see how, how high that is. That's big. So art can, there's no limits. Like you young artist here, there's no limit in doing art. If you're really good at it, if you really keep up at it, you'll, there's, you, there's things you can do. What's so great about being an artist and doing these 1% things about these uh, murals? Professional artists come and work with me. They're like 50 years more experience and they come and work with me and they show me some techniques. This is where I learn from them too. That's the good advantage of working with professional artists that come from down south and work with you. The installation was done by the non-native when I helped them. I do a lot of anniversary. This one is Grand Council, CRA, Board of Compensation, 20th anniversary. Still hanging today at uh, Creco in Ojibugmo. This is my late grandmother, Jane Chemigan. But she married uh, my grandfather, Charlie uh, Madawashish. My grandfather had 24 children, believe it or not. <laughs> I can't match it. <laughs> Too late, no. 
He was married twice, so I'm practically related to the whole community of Ms. Disney. I'm a Ms. Chinino too. A lot of my artwork is big. This one is a nine feet high. How do you do it? Math. <laughs> you calculate. Math is good too. So I had to, uh, to calculate the actual di circumference and there's a way of making your arc. This is a, a painting I did for, uh, for Grand Chief Matthew Kunkum. 30 years of his service, they gave them a painting. So a lot of my works were given for gifts, which is an honor. A lot of canvas, most height. I mix uh, most height, carbo, and then canvas, and the actual beaver frames, like the real heights where they stress the beaver frames. I use those. Sometimes I used to go see the trappers and ask them to give me their 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 old frames, and I would scrape them and sand them and varnish them. I told them, uh, "There's money in them. Don't throw them away. <laughs> it's recycling." A lot of my paintings now are go on the floor on a vinyl floor. This particular one that you see is in Miss Disney. Uh, believe it or not, my daughter's hands are in there too. Sometimes I incorporate some of her her in there. There's actual her hands. I had I copied her hands and I made it larger to a painting. So a lot of this stuff is this is me around the uh, actual artwork. Vinyl is where you're actually stepping on. There's a company in Montreal, those young artists too, never know. You can have your artwork reproduced on the floors, which is uh, quite cool. This is a monument. I also do monuments. Remember, like I said, there's different things that you could do. I became more creative. I started thinking about 3D elements. Well, as an artist, it's important to, to do maquettes, meaning uh, models for uh, monuments. This one is what's commissioned for me to commemorate the Rupert River after the diversion. So you as an artist, you play a, a very important role too in the society. This is the actual finished product. So my art will live for many, 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 many <laughs> years. So it's a privilege. Maybe this alien will come down to it and say, Ooh, but they do do they what are we? And they'll say Tim Whiskey Chan, you know, in three thousand years from now. <laughs> I don't know what kind of language is that, but <laughs> something robotic. <laughs> Speaking of robotic, uh, I was privileged to do logos and this guy was the president of the Can Do. Can do is a business conference across Canada, right? And I was actually privileged to be commissioned to do one for the whole conference across Canada. And this is our TP, Heartbeat Technology. So the heartbeat where our business comes from is from the, our culture to modernism. So that was my own concept. Oops. I even do a little logos for the new motel. That's one in Sesebi, the uh, bed and breakfast. I was commissioned to do this logo here. So I'm still doing a lot of those work. Even foundations, I do a K. Charles Foundation. I was the one uh, who did this logo. I donated this one as, as part of my you know, gift to the, uh, the foundation. In return, they gave me a little recognition and a cap, and I wear it proudly. So your art is very important, you know, you, you play and important in your community uh, or the Cree Nation. This one is the f fire department logo. It's one of my favorite logos. I actually did the regional fire department two logos. All the fire trucks of the Cree James Bay, I'm the one who designed their logo. A lot of my work is in a uh, watercolor. I discovered that in college, but I still use it when I do my artwork. I do a lot of demonstrations in acrylic and watercolor too, and other mediums like airbrushing. This is some of my work. I do a lot of abstract work. Again, I kept to that music. Of course, I don't know what I was listening, but just sway of things and all of a sudden something came up, a tamarack decoy head and all that. A lot of these pieces are watercolor. I don't know if you see it well, but it looks bright on this screen. <coughs> this story, I'll try to make it short. 
This is an anthropologist. His name is Dick Preston. I don't know if you know him, but he's very well known in the Cree, Cree anthropology in the universities. And uh, I had a privilege to meet him in France because I was invited to represent the Cree nation as an artist and also under the Anschugmuk. He was there. And there is actually a book about the memoirs of uh, him talking about all these university teachers that he taught in anthropology, wrote a, a story, or a, my, my wife is bringing that book. And about this book, is so special to me too. He, he commissioned, he took this art, my artwork on his cover of his book. And if you Google it, it's called the uh, Together We Survive, about the crease of the, uh, it talks about the history of different uh, and it's a very interesting book. I suggest you read it. And this one is a, a published work I did for him. That painting I did was a gift in France. Five, three years later, he asked me if I can use that painting. So this one is all over the universities. It's around the world. Whoever can retrieve it on the, in the internet. It was an honor to do something for Mr. Dick Preston. I did. I do paintings on the hand drums as well. This is uh, Earl Dunlick, and I, he asked me to do a painting and uh, certain elements around the drum. And I, I did work for 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 him. I even painted on shoes. <laughs> Ladies, want me to paint on your shoes? <laughs> uh, I can do your fingernails too. <laughs> so I can turn that into a beauty salon. <laughs> I like to joke around. <laughs> and last but not least, this is one of my umbrellas. You saw it over there. I did the uh, the actual drawing for them. And what they did is they did an imprint. I, I posted up on Facebook. And believe it or not, they have they made 2,000 umbrellas. And every CEO, every employee of Gold Corp has a painting of Tim Wiskachan on an umbrella. When I showed that on Facebook, a lot of people wanted to order some, so I told my wife, maybe we should start an umbrella business. <laughs> One of my proudest uh, achievements as up to date is, uh, I don't know, you saw me on the nation, I was on the air. This is the actual drawing I did for the Royal Mint of Canada. Canada. When I first received the call, I was actually goose hunting with my brother. It was in Waswanapi in this lake. It was windy and wood was shaking and phone was started ringing. I said, we, oui, hello? Is this, this Tim Whiskey Chan? Yes. Hi, I'm inquiring about the Royal Mint Coin of Royal Mint Coin. Uh, actually, uh, we have chose your design. However, there's some changes that we need to do. I said, what? Where are you now? She says, I'm actually hunting. Geese are coming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the geese are actually were coming towards us. And I said, I'm hunting. And that was the hunter, the goose hunter. I said, what a coincidence. Wow, it's magic. And then uh, this is me while I was doing the, the artwork. You know, when I received the news two days before I got to stand on the podium like here, and the gentleman that came here, Romeo Shagnas, I was honored. He was my MC. He was emceeing me for that achievement. And then uh, before, even two days before, I, I, I was announced to receive the, the coin in my hand and to talk about I had a dream and I dreamt about my father. You know, I, my dad passed away about seven years ago at that time. And then uh, I said, I wish I could, I wonder what he's thinking right now up there, you know. I was wondering what, what he would have said. I was wondering, I know all those questions was running in my mind. I said, darn, I wish he was here. You know, to but us Crees, we still have that gift. We have these called dreams, visions. Maybe I'm becoming an elder, maybe. <laughs> but I, I still have those visions or dreams. And then I dreamt about my father. In my dream, I saw him coming forth, coming towards me. And he was so young and handsome much handsome than me, <laughs> and he was really pure, and he came to my dream and said, son, 
He said, I love you, son. Congratulations, my son. I'm so proud of you. And he hugged me. It was so real. I could feel his body. I could feel it. Really, it really was, felt really real. And then I got up and I had a tear. I said, wow, thank you. And it was a great honor to him. He came two days before. And my confidence went up. My, I felt so happy. I, I, at first I was kind of nervous to go up there and receive this coin and award and inauguration. And this is the coin I did. You know, this is actually a photo of me. Like the great masters. <laughs> they, take, they do pictures of themselves. My daughter and I uh, took a picture of my together. We went in the bush. And when I got that call, I, I wanted to do two hunters. And the theme for this coin was to teach the young, the old to the young, to transfer the knowledge to the young. And then I said, I'll use my daughter as a model. And my, my photographer was my wife. <laughs> we went in the bush, and I didn't have no bow and arrows. What an Indian, eh? So we, we made, uh, we made uh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. We made this make up uh, bows. And then we pretended we were Indians, yeah. <laughs> which we are. And then uh, we, my, 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 my wife took a picture of my butt. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> then... Uh, and then we, we said, wow, this is a great shot. We're going to use that. That's the first drawing I did. I sent it to uh, Ottawa. But no, they said, you only need one hunter. So this is me. This is my family. Not just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> and this is me with Romeo, Romeo Shaganesh. He, he was so proud, too. And it was an honor for him to be standing beside him. See, you young artists, you never know where your art can go, you know? You never know. And this is where my, my famous words from my dad said, Son, don't yell, son. Do not stop. Don't quit. You, you'll, you'll become somebody someday. And he used to sit with me, just right next to me, those two, ta two chairs. And he would just sit with me. Sometimes he would share stories. Sometimes we would talk. But that's just where the message is for you young artists. Maybe there was another young artist beside you. Sit with him. Just, you know, that's how I got my influence, encouragement from my dad. He just sat there. Didn't say much, but he did his own art. This is my family. We slept where John Lennon slept. I told my daughter, we slept at John Lennon's motel. Famous people. We were staying at Chateau, Chateau Lurie. And my daughter says, yeah, right. You know, I gave them the two basement tour, all these famous people, you know, the history. And, uh, and then my, my daughter says, is there a swimming pool? I said, no, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, she loves to swim. I like, we always tend to live to go, if we go to a motel, we make sure we have a, a swimming pool. But in this case, we didn't have one at our chateau. This is one of the interesting parts. Uh, maybe you could turn that, Ricky. Turn the screen around, maybe. Show it to people. <coughs> you know, lift it up on top of your head. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think you can see it better there. Yeah. OK. Okay, don't start knocking everything down there. <laughs> this is me with my my uniform. No. Remember the time when I told you I was, they gave me a call when I got the Royal Mint? Well, that's the lake. And I was with these youth with me, my, bra my, my niece and nephews. I was walking on the shore. I was picking up these rocks. I said, hey, soft rocks. Maybe they can become powdery. So I, I started painting using the actual rocks we were finding around our goose blinds or around the shores. So I was actually doing an ancient painting like our ancestors used to do. And those kids were saying, wow, this is cool. So this one was a white rock. I was just like your pencil drawings there, like your drawings. I, I was tapping on it. Then I said, oh, cool. I made a goose. Negative and positive. 
It was all done with a rock painting. The geese were not flying that day. We, I had to entertain the I had to. I was getting bored, so I entertained the youth with that. So, as young artists, wherever you are, whatever material you have, use it. You, you can maybe do something while you're there. So this is what I did while waiting for the geese. Uh, it was high noon, then evening came, and the geese were starting to come again. This is the one of the, the murals, the front of the mural. And that's it. So that's part of my life. I have, uh, I'm honored to be here talking to you guys. And I'd like to say special thank you to, uh, to CNYC, Alex, and all the people that are involved. Very thankful for uh, their invitation. Also, my better half, my daughter. I always have m have them come in when they come to a special occasions. I'm gl grateful that they're here with me to show me their support and all the people. And also a special thanks to to all the youth. You have all potential. You have great art. I'm very impressed of all your artwork. Keep it up. Um, and for me, I, I I still do art, still today, still busy. I love art. I, it's always going to be with me till the rest, until I can't see, I guess. <laughs> or so. Thank you very much for listening.